Weather apps are probably one of the most universal phone applications when you really think about it. Most smartphones come with a default weather app, and despite that, third-party weather apps are some of the most popular utilities that are in the app stores. Everyone, except for the most committed of shut-ins, are using these apps just about every day to help them plan their activities, and at the same time, weather apps are some of the most privacy-invasive apps that are out there. Now, they aren't quite as bad as Facebook, TikTok, or the other borderline spyware social media apps that ask you for permissions and access to everything on your phone, but in order for a weather app to work, to tell you what the weather will be, you have to tell it what your location is, since different places have different weather. And even if you use a device-wide VPN to change your location, and you don't actively tell the weather app where you are, it can probably still infer where you are based on what cities you're monitoring the weather for. Because chances are you're not just some nerd who's fascinated with the weather patterns in cities that are half a world away from you. You probably just want to know, is it going to rain and is it going to be chilly today? Do I need to wear a come and find it hoodie to stay warm? But luckily, there is an open source ad-free weather app that I've recently started using that, in my opinion, also has the best user interface of any weather app that I've ever used, including the ones that obviously glow. I'm talking about Breezy Weather, a GPL weather app that is built with material design. This is the GitHub page for it, which I'm gonna leave a link to in the description of this video. And of course, since this is an app that you would most likely be using on your mobile device, you can download and manage it through Obtainium or through F-Droid like I'm doing. And if you plan to use the app on F-Droid like me, you're gonna have to first add the Izzy Android repository to F-Droid and then sync it. There's a lot of great applications in there, so you really should be doing that if you're planning to use F-Droid as your main app store. Anyway, when you open up the Breezy Weather app for the first time, you're gonna be prompted to add a new location or you could just use your current location and the app will use GPS to find your current location. Uh, and of course, you're gonna have to make sure that the app has the correct permissions to do that in your phone settings. Uh, now, one thing to look out for when you're searching through the app to find your city is what option you're using to find cities. So for example, you can see at the bottom right now, it says location results by open Matteo, uh, and then it's using geo names. So for example, if I were to type in uh, Boston to search for like Boston, Massachusetts, the result that it gives me is Boston, United States, Suffolk, which is correct. Um, Suffolk is just like the county that the city of Boston is in. Um, so if you know the county for all the cities that you're going to be adding, then, you know, I guess you can go ahead and do this. But, you know, chances are that's not what you were expecting. So if you click on this little hamburger menu in the lower right hand corner, uh, you get an option to change the location search source. And if you change it to AccuWeather, now the result that I'm getting is Boston, United States, Massachusetts. So this is probably what you're looking for. Uh, and just make sure that you go ahead and do that if you can't find your city for some reason. Now, once you've picked your city, Again, you're going to get options for the sources that you want to use. This time, it's where you want to pull your weather data from, and you can use different things for like air quality um, or for pollen, precipitation, etc. Now, I've seen people say online that AccuWeather tends to have better data, like their data tends to be more accurate. Um, I'm sure that it's probably going to depend a bit depending on where you're living. So this is something that you're going to have to determine for yourself by trying different sources over time. Uh, but it's not too difficult to change these sources later. So go ahead and pick whatever you want, really. 
Okay, so now we've added a city and we can go ahead and click into it to get into this beautiful UI. So the background moves around as you tilt the device. Um, this is a very, very modern looking app, which is great because I know a lot of people, one of the common complaints that I hear about FOSS applications is that they don't have the most amazing looking UI. They tend to have UIs that I don't know, I guess some people say that they're too simple or they look really old school. So if you're into eye candy, this app definitely has plenty of it. So first thing that we have, uh, well, of course, at the top, we have some important information like, is it cloudy outside? And then we've got the uh, temperature, which is 69 degrees freedom units, so very nice. And below that, we have the daily forecast. So with the daily forecast, I'm getting about a week of weather that's displayed here, which I'm pretty sure is more than what you get with AccuWeather's free app that also contains some intrusive ads. Um, now, you can select between different displays for temperature, air quality, wind, precipitation, and also the real field temperature, you know, what um, I guess what the temperature really feels like outside. And there's also an hourly forecast that is right below this, which again, goes out for about one week. So you can get an hour by hour forecast an entire week in advance with this app for free and no ads. AccuWeather is definitely not doing that for you folks. Um, and of course, just like with any other app that you're using, any other weather app that you're using, um, the accuracy of the forecasts are going to vary and they're also typically gonna be more accurate as you get closer in time to the activity or whatever you're checking the weather for. Uh, and there's also an air quality meter uh, that can be looked at hour by hour for the forecast and same thing wind, uh, precipitation, feels like, humidity dew point, cloud cover, and also visibility. Um, and then here we have a sun and moon shard. So this is telling us the phases of the moon and it's also telling us when the sun rises and when it's set to set each day. And then down at the bottom, we've got some other details about the dew point visibility and cloud cover. Um, and all of these cards can be changed in the settings. So let's just drill through some of these settings real quick. Um, you can adjust in background updates the refresh rate for how often you want the forecast to update. So reducing this, um, like as in increasing the number of hours between the refresh rate can save you some battery life. Uh, so that might be something you want to do. And then there's also um, options in here. Well, by default, it's enabling battery optimization. So I guess you can disable that if you want it to be uh, extra super accurate and you're not worried about uh, killing off your battery. Uh, going back into appearance, uh, you can change the language of the app, of course. Um, you can change whether you want it to use dark mode or light mode. Um, you can also set it to change between uh, dark and night mode for different locations. Um, and as the day goes by, you can set a custom icon pack. You can also change the unit, so temperature unit. If you want to use uh, Celsius freedom units or Kelvin, you can change um, between, again, millimeters, centimeters, inches. Uh, for precipitation, you can change the distance unit, you can change speed, and you can also change the pressure unit to whatever measurement that you want to do. Um, and then going back into the main screen settings. So this is where uh, you can change what cards are displayed and you can also change the order that information is displayed in. Uh, so you have a lot of settings you can change here as far as how that main display is set up. You can customize it to be exactly how you want it to be. Um, and the background animation, so you can also uh, change this. Like if you don't want it to tilt when you move your phone away, you can disable the gravity sensor. Um, and you can also just disable this altogether. Like if you're using an older device or you don't like that fancy UI, if you're, I guess, one of the few people that really like old school looking UI, then you can set it up to work that way. Uh, notifications, so 
of course, this is notifications about different weather alerts, uh, precipitation, etc. cetera, uh, widgets and live wallpapers. So this will let you set uh, a live wallpaper on your phone and you can also enable a notifications widget. So this way, when you swipe down, you're going to get this um, info here that's telling you what the, um, you know, temperature and precipitation, then it also gives you this quick overview here. And of course you can customize that widget and that widget will be available on your lock screen. And then going back to the main screen, if you wanna adjust the weather sources on a per location basis, you can do so by tapping the little pencil icon. So here you can then change the weather sources for, um, let's say for our main source, well, let's actually do AccuWeather for the main source. Um, and then, yeah, that's automatically gonna pull everything from AccuWeather. And you can also add new locations by tapping on, um, I guess it kind of looks like three map pins that are clustered together, pretty much the icon right to the neck, right to the right of that pencil. Um, so we can even add the same location multiple times. So like, let's say I wanna add uh, Boston again, and let me see, I did AccuWeather uh, last time, so we'll do National Weather Service and save. So now I've got two Bostons, but one of them is using National Weather Service, and then the, um, the other one is going to be using data by AccuWeather. So if you're really just looking at weather in one particular location, and I guess you want it to be super, super accurate, uh, or you want to get multiple forecasts, and I guess... I don't know, like kind of average them together in your head, then you can do all of that with this app. So that should pretty much cover the basics of the Breezy Weather app. And not only is this app a beautiful piece of free software by itself, uh, but its story is also one that highlights another beauty of free software, which is being able to fork an app from another one that's been abandoned or you know maybe you don't like some design of the app or whatever, but in Breezy Weather's case, uh, it was forked from an app called Geometric Weather, uh, who I think the developer just stopped developing the app. I'm not exactly sure why, but you can see that the last commit here was two years ago. So, you know, if this app was uh, proprietary and you know it's also really popular right like it's still got two and a half thousand stars on github despite it not being actively developed for the past two years so just imagine how popular it was in its heyday and you know if this app was proprietary there wouldn't be any way for someone to just easily fork it like this and keep the development of the app going. I mean, you know, there's reverse engineering and stuff like that, but it's much, much harder to do than just continuing the life of an app when you have access to the source code and you have access to the commits and everything you would need to practically be able to continue on uh, the development of an app. So, when you use free software, it's always gonna be available to you. You can participate in the development of the app to either bring it back to life or you can just make it, be make it better while it is still being developed. And speaking of uh, making it better while it's still being developed, so the Breezy Weather app has, um, obviously there's a bunch of goals and things that are um, gonna be within the issues, but on the main page, one thing that I saw mentioned that some of you watching might be able to help with is getting more translations added to it. So especially for, um, uh, well, Korean and, and Kurdish, you know, I, I, Korean's maybe the more popular language here that uh, is still missing almost half of its translation. Uh, but there's a bunch of other ones like Estonian's got very little um, translated for it. Bengali has very little translated for it. Uh, Tamil, Tamil, however you pronounce that, has very little uh, translated in the app. So if you're somebody who's not necessarily a developer or you don't have like that engineer mindset, but you're still fluent in any of these languages and you're able to write good in these languages and I guess use GitHub, then you can participate in the development of the app. You can do some much needed work to make this app even better. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and share it to hack the algorithm. Buy my merch on base.win and have a great rest of your day.